forgiveness. You are not going to believe what happened to me today. I was at school sitting at the lunch table with my friends when all of a sudden one of them said something terrible to my friend Anna. She started calling Anna names and telling her that nobody wanted to be her friend and she should just go away and never sit with us again. Anna was so hurt. She even got angry with the girl who said these things. Anna told me she was never going to forgive that girl because she didn't deserve it. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever been so hurt by someone that you thought you could never forgive them? Oh, you know I have. You thought to yourself, they are so terrible. How dare they do that to me? They don't deserve to be forgiven. It's easy for us to think that way. Oh, yeah, it is. But it's not right. Oh. Oops. See, the Bible says that forgiveness is something that we have to do, even when it's hard. Did you know that when we choose not to forgive someone, it actually hurts us more than it hurts them? Huh? It's true. It hurts us. Badly. <gasps> oh no! Just wait until you hear today's lesson. You're going to learn from the story of the unforgiving servant what God says will happen when we choose not to forgive people. Spoiler alert, it's not good. Today, you're going to learn why we must forgive others when they hurt us. You're definitely going to want to pay attention to this lesson about forgiveness. Until next time, this is Ashton. See ya. Hey kids, Pastor Becky here. Welcome back to our series on forgiveness. We're learning about one of the most important elements of a Christian life. You got it, forgiveness. Last time we learned about what forgiveness is. This time we're learning something else about forgiveness. Many people understand what forgiveness is, but they still ask the question, why do I have to forgive? To them it just doesn't make sense to forgive someone who has hurt them. Have you ever wondered why you have to forgive? Wow, those are some good answers. Forgiveness is super important, huh? The Bible teaches us that if we don't forgive, well, God won't forgive us. That's a pretty tough truth. And it's exactly what we're going to learn about in our lesson today. But first, take a look at today's Powerverse video. Thank you, thank you. Oh, please hold the applause. <laughs> thank you. Well, I am the actor, and I'm here to teach you today's power verse. And if you want to be a great method actor like myself, you must know the power verse. So let's get to it. Today's power verse says, Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Colossians 3.13b what a stupendous power verse. But if there's anything I've ever learned, it's that you'll never forget your lines, or the power verse in this instance, if you say it completely in character. So to help us, let's select today's character from the character box. Ah, yes, today's character is a cow who is playing chess with a dinosaur. Hmm. Acting, thank you! Haha, <laughs> no, today's character is actually a person who has suffered a cold. Someone with a stuffy nose. <laughs> so take your fingers and do like this. And then I want all the boys and girls to stand up and say today's power verse with me on the count of three. One, two, three. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Colossians 313B. Acting, thank you. Wow, that was superb. Well, I must get going, so I'll see you later, boys and girls. Exit, stage left. <laughs> Has anyone seen stage left? I believe I went the wrong way. I don't know where it is. Let's practice today's power verse one more time. Are you ready? As quiet as you can make it. 
Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Colossians 3, 13, B. Now say it as loud as you can. Are you ready? Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Colossians 3, 13, B. I think you guys got it. You're doing so good. Well, today's Bible story is found in the book of Matthew. That's the first book of the New Testament in chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. It's a parable that Jesus told his followers. You might be wondering, what's a parable? Well, a parable is just a simple story that has a very important lesson behind it. Here we go. There once was a king who decided it was time to collect all the money that was owed him, that he had loaned out to his servants. There was one servant in particular who owed him a lot of money. In fact, it was millions of dollars. So the king had the servant brought to him. Because the servant was not able to pay, the king commanded that he be sold with his wife and his children and all that he had, and payment be made. The servant was desperate. He fell down before the king and said, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. The king was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. Can you imagine how excited he must have been to have been forgiven of all his huge debt? Maybe he even skipped out of the king's court whistling a tune. The servant went out and found one of his fellow servants. This is what he did instead, who owed him some money. The servant had borrowed money from the first one, but it wasn't a lot, just a very small amount. The first servant grabbed the second servant by the throat and screamed, pay me what you owe. The second servant fell down at his feet and begged him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. But the first servant demanded that the second servant be thrown into prison until he was able to pay the debt. Meanwhile, the king heard about what the first servant had done. He demanded that the servant come back to his court. He said, you wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And the king was very angry and he put the servant in prison to be punished. The servant had to stay in prison until he could pay everything he owed. Today, we're going to learn what Jesus was trying to teach us through this parable. You're going to learn that you must forgive others as you have been forgiven. If you don't, you run the risk of not being forgiven by God. Listen closely as we look at our call to action for today. The first question is, why should I forgive? We're going to start with a story. This is going to require you guys to to put your imagination hats on and just picture this for a moment. A dad sitting quietly at the park bench reading his newspaper. Doesn't that sound awesome? A young boy walks up to the bench licking his lollipop. He stops at the bench and sits down. But as he sits down, his eyes get really super big. Unknown to the dad, the boy has just sat on a bee. But instead of making a lot of noise, he makes a lot of bunch of crazy faces like he's in pain and he squirms back and forth all over the bench. Well, the dad starts to notice this strange behavior of the boy and he looks over at him. The boy just continues to squirm and make painful faces. The dad goes back to reading, but he can't help looking at the boy and finally he just looks at him and he says son are you all right the boy continues to squirm he goes no not really man looking puzzled looks at him and goes well what's wrong the boy says i sat down on a bumblebee 
The man, looking even more puzzled, says, well, why don't you get up? The boy continues to squirm, because I figure I'm hurting him more than he's hurting me. Man, the man replies, the dad replies, he says, you, you realize how crazy that sounds, right? As he looks at the boy, he shakes his head. He gets up his newspaper and he walks away. The boy, sitting there on the bench, finally can't take it anymore, and he gets up, jumps up, and screams, and he runs away. That was awful silly of the boy, right? How many of you would have done that? Probably no one. He sat on that bench, going through all that pain, thinking he was hurting the bumblebee more than he was, the bumblebee was hurting him. But the truth is that he was the one who was hurting the most. What he needed to do was just get up off the bench and walk away. Often, we do the same thing when it comes to forgiveness. We choose to try to get revenge on someone who hurts us, thinking we'll make them feel some pain, just like they made us feel some pain. But the truth is, when we choose to forgive someone, we cho I mean, when we choose not to forgive someone, we are just really hurting ourselves. Which brings us to choosing not to forgive others hurts me more than it hurts them. You might say, no, it doesn't. I don't feel bad at all about not forgiving them. So how does it hurt me more than it hurts them? Let me explain. I got some things here today. I have this apple. Mm, you see this apple? Oh. Mm. Mm -mm. Aren't apples just delicious? Oh, I just love apples. I love apple pie. Mm, I love apple sauce. I love apple juice. I mean, they're just so delicious. But what happens to that sweet taste of that apple when I take this salt and just pour it all over this apple? Hmm. Would you want to eat it now? Mm -mm, I didn't think so. Turns a little bitter, doesn't it? That's exactly what happens to us when we choose not to forgive. This apple represents our hearts and our attitudes. God created us to love others and treat them just as we would want to be treated. But when we choose not to forgive someone, we hold that in our heart and it leads to bitterness. The effect that salt had on that apple is the same effect that unforgiveness can have on our hearts and our attitude. We can become bitter and angry and full of bad feelings that will eat away at our hearts and turn us into people who are angry and bitter all the time. Hebrews 12.15 in our Bible says, Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. When you're filled with bitterness, mm, it affects you and everyone around you. That's one of the ways that choosing not to forgive hurts us more than it hurts the other person. But there's even a bigger way that it hurts us. When I choose not to forgive others, God will not forgive me. You might be thinking, you can't say that. God would not forgive me. But it's not me that's saying that. Jesus said exactly that when he told the parable of the unforgiving servant in today's Bible story. In Matthew 18, 35, Jesus refers to the fact that the king re refused to forgive the unforgiving servant and says this, that's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Wow. If we choose not to forgive those who have hurt us, then God refuses to forgive us. Why? Because that's the whole reason, boys and girls, that Jesus came and died on the cross so that all people could be forgiven. When we choose not to forgive others, mm, we're acting as though what Jesus did on the cross was not that important. Forgiveness is important, 
And it's a command from God to us. Forgive those who have hurt you just as I have forgiven you. So what should we do? If someone has hurt us, we, we have done exactly what the king did to the unforgiving servant. We have locked them away in the prison of our unforgiving heart. What we need to do today is to make a choice. We need to choose to go to them and set them free from the prison of our unforgiveness. We can do it. Why? Because forgiveness is a choice. I must choose to set them free. It's a choice that you must make. You must go to them and set them free. That might mean you talk to them face to face or you might write them a note. Perhaps you just pray and release them in your heart. But when you choose to forgive that person, you release them from the prison of your unforgiveness. Then ask God to forgive you for holding that bitterness in your heart. Then you will find that after you've set the prisoner or set that person free, guess what? You feel free as well. Forgiveness is a wonderful thing. You know what? I've had that opportunity before when people have hurt me. And I'm telling you, that is the truth. When you forgive them from your heart, guess what? You set them free, but you're the one that's free also. Maybe there's someone, boys and girls, that you're just struggling with. And you heard this lesson today and you said, you know what? I've got to forgive them just like God has forgiven me. But you're struggling with that. You know what? We can go to prayer and we can ask God to help us to forgive them from our heart. And he answers us every single time. Let's pray. And if you have that person that you can't forgive, as I'm praying, you pray also and ask God to help you to forgive them. And then go to them or write them a note or maybe just right there in your room. Just choose to forgive them from your heart. You'll be glad you did. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, right now, I just ask you to help us, Lord. You said that you have given us your Holy Spirit as our helper to help us to live the life you have for us. And God, right now, I ask you to help each boy and girl that's struggling in this area but wants to do what's right, that you would help them through the power of your Holy Spirit to really forgive that person that's hurt them from their heart. And I thank you as they do that, that, Father, you set them free as they set that other person free also from their unforgiveness. Father, I thank you. And Father, forgive us for any bitterness that we might be holding on to in regards to that person. Lord, and I thank you, Lord, that you forgive us, Lord God. And it shows us how we can forgive others from our heart. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I'm so glad you came to join me today in today's lesson on forgiveness. It's such an important lesson to learn, isn't it? Stay tuned because there's a family devotion that will be coming up that you can sit with your family. You can discuss more about the subject of forgiveness. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.